guys gather around quick story time so 2016 i received a call from one of my clients who was a mobile tech he encountered a problem that i'd never seen or heard before and as we investigated the problem further to our dismay we stumbled across a piece of technology that was beyond our scandal's capabilities at that time now instead of him running away from this situation he took it head on and i can tell you in four short years he went from being a one-man operation to hiring six mobile techs helping him address this problem every single day okay i work with this guy a lot he's doing very well and in this presentation i want to share with you what ATIS is and how to capitalize on this new technology all right for those of you who don't know my name is curtis harden i'm an auto diagnostic consultant I sell and do the training on this new opportunity that I'm going to reveal to you today. So by the end of this presentation, if you watch to the end, you will learn the following. The new arrival of ATIS now and in the future, then we're going to talk about the different levels of autonomy and the technology that's behind it. Third, we're going to talk about different business models that you can take advantage of, of this new opportunity. And then lastly, how to determine which tools and equipment needed for your business. All right, who is this for? Well, it's for anybody in the auto glass industry. You guys are going to be definitely getting these ATIS calibration events. And also anybody in the auto body repair industry. And lastly, anybody who may want to help these people in the auto glass and auto body repair industry, okay? What I can tell you off the bat, anyone who is associated with this technology will be doing themselves a financial favor. So what is ATIS? It's a very good question. I'm going to answer it for you right now. So ATIS stands for Advanced Driver Assistant Systems. Okay. This is a compilation of electronic systems that assist the vehicle driver while driving or during parking scenarios. Its intent is to improve driver safety and reduce the severity and number of traffic accidents with technologies such as, such as traffic sign recognition, lane departure warning, you know, to warn the driver when the vehicle begins to move out of its lane. There's night vision, even drowsiness detection systems that trigger an alert when the driver is falling asleep. Whether you're experiencing these vehicles or scenarios in your workshop, this is reality that's only going, going to continue to grow, okay? Why should you care? Well, let's look at the data, guys, all right? Vehicles equipped with ATIS technology. So in 2001, it was less than 1% of vehicles, all right? But that increased in 2016 to 25%. And by 2030, almost 50% of vehicles will have a standardized ATIS uh, equipment on it. All right, it's going to be mandated by the government, so it's only going to increase. And let me show you this, guys. This is where ATIS is going to take us. Take us. It's it's the five levels of autonomy. Okay, so the first level is driver assisted functions. The driver needs to handle all the the situations. Second is partial automation. At least two autonomous tasks are managed by the vehicle in specific scenarios. And then there's conditional automation. Drivers needed but not required to monitor the environment. Number four, the vehicle can perform all driving functions under certain conditions. The driver may have the option to take, to take control of the vehicle. And then five is full automation, okay? This is where you're just chilling, all right? It, it's kind of nerve wracking when you think about it, but we're gonna get to the point where it's, we're gonna be accustomed to it. Now, this concept is phenomenal because if you think about it, this was only thought to be in movies. But in the last five years, tremendous breakthroughs have been, um, you know, conducted with the technology. And it will likely get us to that point where we're doing full autonomy, you know, to improve our overall safety of the, of the driver. Now, the challenges I think automakers are going to have is being able to combine these sensors functionality and efforts to reduce the cost of manufacturing dramatically because there's a lot of sensors. In fact, let me show you what's going on, like how many sensors are on the vehicle. So if you look at this diagram 
On the left, we have long range radar sensor. There's LiDAR, there's camera, there's short medium range radar, there's ultrasound. And you know, the, the more, let's say automated these cars are gonna be, I think the more sensors are gonna be on there. So we're still kind of far from level five, in, in my opinion. Um, but at the moment you can see more or less what you're going to be getting into and, and you guys some of these sensors if you just take off like a bumper that has a sensor you're going to need to recalibrate it it doesn't even need to be in an accident so you can see what we're going to be dealing with all right so a lot of you guys are currently outsourcing and you need to put a stop to this okay here's why first off it's very expensive okay now you know the dealers are not our friends and you know how I feel about outsourcing stuff to them. And if you're doing this several times a week, you're gonna be leaking profits um, you know, out of your business like a broken pipe, okay? Next, it's time consuming, okay? It takes time to schedule the end vehicles to the dealers, which causes delays. And sometimes you have to send your own employees to drop off the vehicles, which takes them away from doing their job. And lastly, you're not learning any skills by outsourcing. So yes, I understand you're trying to get the car back to the customer in a timely manner, but if you just make a cognitive decision that you're gonna you know, keep this operation in-house, pay attention to the next slide, okay? Because this is what I recommend. If you look at your business on an overhead view and we're gonna go down, so that way we can have a really good uh, focus on what to do and how to address this problem. So let's just say you're a body shop or an auto glass repair company that has multiple locations okay and one of these shops let's say has an ample amount of space to do ADIS calibrations okay if that's the case you guys what I recommend is setting up what I call a remote calibration department okay now dedicating one or more locations to perform all ADIS calibrations for all the various locations this model addresses the pain point of outsourcing to third parties and takes more control streamlining the calibration needs of the various locations, okay? It can be done by coordinating the calibration needs with the blue, in the blueprinting process with the ATIS calibration department, okay? Now, once the vehicle has been repaired, the remote team will be notified and they can bring all their equipment to the shop and perform the ATIS calibrations, okay? This provides complete control of scheduling and the quality of completed tasks. Okay, so that's one strategy. The next strategy is, um, you know, if your market doesn't have the expertise and space to do this, you can do a full mobile operation. Okay, you can expand this service to other shops that don't have the knowledge or the equipment to perform these ADIS calibrations. And then you can also do other things like, you know, pre and post scans, uh, coding, ECU programming, as well as the ADIS calibrations, okay? The shop just needs to be able to provide the required space to do this. And it's an easy way to scale your operations. I, I recently had a client um, started in California and he has like three shops in three different states. So mobile is a good uh, way to go. And lastly, okay, this is something that I would do if I was going to do this, is an independent calibration facility, okay? The benefits of having this dedicated setup is, A, you're perceived as an authority. This is what you specialize in. You don't do nothing else but calibrations. And as a result, you'll become people's go-to partner, you know, with other shops. So. You know, when a shop gets to the point where they need an ATIS calibration, they'll send it over to you and you'll take care of those, those issues. And this has a huge upside, all right? Right now we're in the Wild West type of, you know, story. Like it's, it's uh, an untapped market that a lot of people are not even aware of, okay? So if you're gonna take this route, here are some things that you need to take in consideration, all right? First, you need a right amount of space, all right? The floors must be completely level, okay? Uh, it must be clean with a non-glare surface, 
Walls need to be free from any reflective items and you need to make sure your calibration bay is away from any support beams as this will interfere with your calibrations. All right. And if we dive deeper into the space requirements, um, on the diagram here, there's a wheel alignment machine, a calibration frame, and then the lift. Okay. Now in terms of the, of the bay side requirement, it needs to be by 30 feet by 16 okay and then on the perimeter of the vehicle you need to have enough space um, for the target placements there's target placements that you put alongside of the vehicle sometimes as well all right so next question what equipment will I need ah this is a difficult one because there's a lot of different factors based on your needs. So first you need a, a scan tool. Now Alltail has different scan tools. Each one will might have the ADIS calibration software on it. Some don't. So you need to be consulted on which one would be right for you. In addition, depending on which scan tool you need, you're probably going to need what they call an ADIS subscription as well. Okay, that, that will link up to your target which I'm going to show you right now. Um, now there's two types of targets. Um, there's this one and this one has different uh, calibration uh, targets that you can buy with it depending on your needs. And then there's also a mobile solution as well. Um, and this is kind of geared for people who are in the auto glass industry or if you want to do any type of mobile uh, pr uh, procedures. Okay and then Another thing that you guys could probably look into if you're going to go all in on it is a wheel alignment machine. I was surprised by this. So most manufacturers require a four wheel alignment for steering related ADIS sensor calibrations. Okay. Most of the systems are use, use inputs from the vehicle to include steering angle and rear thrust angle. And the wheel alignment ensures the vehicle thrust line points are straight down the road when the steering wheel is centered. ADA sensors are then calibrated to be in alignment with the thrust line. All right, so this is something that you also need. Now, even if you acquire all this expensive equipment, your results will be only as good as the technician you hire, okay? So when performing ADIS calibrations, you need a specialized tech that has a certain level of traits and skill sets, okay? I've helped develop these technicians from scratch. In fact, I refer to them as what I call an ICE technician. Okay, what is ICE? So it just means internal calibration expert. Okay, and some of the skills and attributes they will learn are they'll be complete computer literate, which is very important. All right, um, some certain calibrations you can use the OEM software. They need to be able to uh, retrieve information, you know, in terms of uh, ADIS calibration procedures. All right, so being computer literate is one skill. The second skill that they will learn that I can teach is ECU programming with the J254. Some procedures require you to program these ADIS calibration sensors before you do the uh, target calibrations. And then, coding and initialization of replaced components, and lastly, the ADIS calibration, okay? Most shops will have a difficulty making this transition to ADIS calibrations due to the fact they are focused on the bodywork and the mechanical repairs, okay? Now, with the rapid growth in the technology and more demand of the repair process, developing a uh, in-house calibration expert will be very difficult and that's kind of where I come in all right now you guys are excited and before you go out and you know just buy the tool I want you to think about this quote okay clarity is more important than speed okay so if you don't know your exact if I don't know your exact um, requirements okay I can't give you a recommendation all right, because if I do, you might find yourself in a costly situation because you're giving the incorrect information that's really not catered to your needs. Everybody has a different business, okay? 
More importantly, you probably won't have the training to help you make that transition into ADIS. All right. So I developed this process that will solve this problem. Okay. It's called the diagnostic tool consultation. All right. The first step, when someone books a consult with me, uh, we'll do like a uh, computer to computer remote presentation. And I need to ask you questions to understand your business. That's the first step. Okay. The second step we're going to do is review some of your obstacles and risks associated and how much that's going to be costing you on a uh, monthly basis and yearly basis. Okay. The third thing is we're going to cover the differences between coding and programming because a lot of people have a misconception of this and you need to know the difference of them and, and how to do them. Next, we're going to cover the diagnostic tool and ADIS kit selection. I'm going to show you which tool would be catered for your needs and then which diagnostic kit will also be catered for the market that you want to, to tackle. And then we're going to have financing options. I have several financial providers that you can choose from. And then also ADIS demonstration videos. Now these videos aren't on the internet. You won't find them on YouTube. And this way you have a clear indication on how to do your ADIS calibrations. And then lastly, my services. Okay. So if this is, has inspired you and you really want to, you know, dive into this and start on with the right foundation, Follow these three steps. Go to autotech.co.za. Okay. You can fill in the application form, then select the diagnostic tool consultation. Yes, it's a paid consultation. And then we'll go over everything. It'll be a one hour consultation and you keep that document and then you can share with your superiors. And then that way you will have the right foundation. Okay. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this presentation. I'm really excited about this new technology and I look forward to hopefully working with you in the future. Okay, take care guys.